Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up the software in the loop simulation and have a simulated version of Arduipilot control your aircraft while it flies in Unity. By the end of this video you should be able to run a simulation of Arduipilot using Mission Planner. You'll be able to send your aircraft state information from the Unity simulation over to the simulated version of Arduipilot. And then we're going to also make sure that the servo signals that are coming back from Arduipilot are correctly used in the Unity simulation. So to start using the project, I've made sure that I'm on the latest version and I've followed the steps in the software in the loop guide on how to configure my project so that I don't have any errors and that everything will be able to run smoothly. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to go into the package, into the scenes folder and I'm going to open the huff end scene so that we can simulate the aircraft in situ rather than in a lab environment. So we've opened up huff end and we can see a fairly out of date map of the environment and this is where we're going to be flying. It is completely flat, there's no buildings. If you have the time or the inclination you can add the buildings in yourself but this is good enough. You'll notice I've deleted the main aircraft that comes in the scene that's because I have my own prefab now so I'm going to go into aircraft folder. This will be in your assets folder remember. I'm going to take my main aircraft and I'm going to drag it into the scene like so. Then I'll just go to a top down view, I'll put it roughly where we take off and then I'm just going to go in and make sure that it's on the ground. Next I just need to go into all the cameras and I'm just going to set the target of each camera to be the aircraft. Now we should be able to fly straight away in this configuration um, but the main thing that we want to check is that we've got everything set up. So we're going to go on to the main aircraft now, we're going to scroll down and we're going to add the software in the loop controller. So if we go into add component, we can type SITL and it's this one, software in the loop controller. And this controller requires two other scripts which it should automatically add to the aircraft. So that's a UDP server which is going to communicate uh, between Unity and the simulation of the Arduipilot software. And then this aircraft state estimator, which is like the inertial measurement attitude measuring device uh, that gives us all the different data for the aircraft. And that's what's fed into the simulated version of Arduipilot. So one other thing that we need to do is we need to notice that the aircraft rigid body reference just needs creating here. So if we just drag the aircraft into that and everything is ready and we can run the simulation. So the first step of the process is to start up the simulation of the Arduipilot software. So we're going to open Mission Planner to do that first. And then in Mission Planner, we're going to go up at the top to the simulation tab. And this is where we can run simulations of the Autopilot software. So we need to add a few extra command lines here so that the simulation is will work with Unity and that it's in the right location. You'll notice at the moment it's in Clambetter instead of Manchester, so we need to change the home location for starters. And all of this information is in the software in the loop guide. So if we go into the mission planner quick start, we can copy and paste this part of the parameter, uh, the command line like this, and paste it in here, and that's ready to run. The first time that you run the simulation, you'll want to make sure that skip download is not ticked so that Mission Planner will download the stable version of Arduipilot for you and then you can run the simulations of the Arduipilot software. Once you've done that for the first time you can click skip download and it'll skip that process and it'll know where it saved the software. So for now I'm going to show you as though this was the first time so I've unchecked that and I'm going to select plane here and then I'm going to choose the stable version. The Mission Planner will download that software and then it'll start using the JSON interface. So you'll see it says it's trying to connect. There's going to be a timer and it's opened up this window here which shows us information such as what the home latitude and longitude, altitude and heading are and the fact that it's now running the JSON interface so we can see here that it's received no sensor message and it's trying to send servo signals to 
kind of instigate a response. So I've talked too long, uh, the timeout's going to go, so we're going to end up getting an error here and it's going to say that it didn't receive any heartbeats, so we need to close and it's disconnected. We need to exit that simulation and start again. So we go back, make sure this command line's sorted. We've already done the download this time, so I can click skip download and I can choose the plane and it starts up much quicker. So there we go. The next step is to go into Unity and with the software and the loop controller set up, we've got the message send frequency set to 400 Hertz, UDP server and state estimator are attached and we just need to make sure that the aircraft controller is using the software in the loop controller here. So if we do that, and then we go and press play. Now Unity will be sending the state information about the aircraft out and the mission planner will be receiving that information. And we can see we're now in the correct latitude and longitude position and Mission Planner is showing us the correct information for our aircraft. So at the moment, it's just kind of sat on level ground. What we can do then is go to things like actions, press arm, and the aircraft is now armed. And then we can go over here and we can say, take off, apply the mode by pressing set mode. And now the aircraft is gonna try and take off. So it's gonna go through an automated sequence and then if we go back to Unity, we'll notice that nothing's happening. And that is because the servo signals that are being sent are incorrect. So the next step is for us to figure out what's going on here and solve the issue of our servos being wrong. So by default, both Unity and RGPilot assume that the aircraft is controlled by providing attitude demands to the aircraft. So that's one value that represents the role of the aircraft, one value that represents pitch, one for the throttle and one for the yaw of the aircraft. In Unity, that corresponds nicely to the sticks on a radio transmitter or an Xbox controller or the arrows on your keyboard. Those inputs are attitudes, they're not servo signals. So what the Unity simulation does and what RGPilot software do is to mix those state demands. So at the moment, the Unity aircraft controller is configured for state demands. Those state demands are passed on through a control mixing matrix, which then associates the roll demand to aileron signals, the pitch demand to an elevator signal, etc. This is fine for a standalone simulation where you're controlling it with an Xbox controller, but when we want to simulate Unity responding to the RGPilot software itself, we want to mimic what's going to happen on the real aircraft, and that means the actual servos are plugged straight into the RGPilot controller, and Unity should be expecting to receive raw control signals that will go straight to the actuators on the aircraft. So to tell Unity that it needs to be doing this, we go down to the aircraft controller here, and this input type we change from state demand to raw control signals. That fixes the Unity side of the issue. And now we need to get RGPilot onto the same page as Unity. So we go back to Mission Planner. We go to the Setup tab at the top here. We go into Mandatory Hardware and we choose Servo Output. And this will give you a list of all the functions that RGPilot expects for the servo signals that it's providing you with. So for example, this first servo signal that RGPilot is putting out, it thinks corresponds to an aileron which in this kind of default setup would correspond to a roll demand for the aircraft because there's only one aileron it's the same thing as saying that's the roll that it wants to be at and again the elevator and the rudder are the pitch and the yaw and then we also have throttle so if we take this side by side with unity we can go into the control allocation again and we can see the list of actuators here and we can compare and match them up to RGPilot. So we'll see here, the first servo should be an aileron. And if we go back to Unity, it is a starboard aileron. So we were lucky there. 
Next is the elevator. So in Unity, we can grab the little two lines next to these and move them around. So let's put the elevator as the next element. Then we have the throttle. So if we go to the propulsion system, that's the third element. Then we have rudder, and then we've run out of servos. So we need to go to the function here and add. We need a flap. So that's this element. Then we need another aileron. That's this one. And I know that this one needs to be reversed. Not both of the ailerons, just this one. And then finally we have the other flap. If you don't have flaps, you don't need to add flaps in Pilot, and your list of actuators should not include flaps anyway. So just ignore the flaps. One final thing to check in Pilot is the min and max values for your servos PWM signals. Unity expects these to come with a minimum of 1100 and a maximum of 1900. It doesn't matter about the trim, that's just the kind of zero value for Argypilot. Um, what really matters is those min and max values because if you provide something greater than this max then Unity will end up with a value greater than one effectively and things can start breaking. Also, if the minimum value is too large, then Unity won't be able to bring things like the throttle down to completely be at zero. So we need to make sure that they align as well. So once we've done this, everything should be properly aligned and we can go back to data. We can zoom out of our aircraft and we should be able to arm and try to take off again. So let's try set mode to take off. And we see that the aircraft lifts into the air, reaches a good altitude or the prescribed altitude, which it should do eventually. There we go. Oh, and it fell out of the sky. So this is just using the default parameters that Pilot provides for plane controller. Um, the next steps will obviously be to configure those parameters so that they control your aircraft much better than this, hopefully.